Hello friends, greetings from Zanzibar. Before I went on holiday, I asked my beauty club group which techniques they would like me to record uh, for them while I'm away and techniques for sagging eyelids came fast. So before we do anything for the eyelids, it is useful to remember, of course, that for us to lift this area, it has to go somewhere, which is here and here, isn't it? And um, if things are stuck, if um, the skin and fascia um, is not movable here well enough and kind of stuck to the <laughs> to, to the bony structures underneath here and also here there isn't really any space for that lift so where I would start and where I would regularly pay attention to if I was to lift sagging eyelids is of course the scalp itself and for this you could actually use um, a brush, a normal brush. Maybe you have one that you can use in the shower, I have one that I use in the shower, but this is just a normal plastic brush. And if you've ever been to an Indian head massage, what I would do is um, work my whole scalp with gentle back and forth movements. Just like that, from the front to the back, paying attention to the region above the ear. This is important because the temporal muscle here, rather here, um, is one that has an effect on the appearance of the eyelid as well. So I'm literally covering my whole head and also the back of the head because this and this are part, two parts of the same muscle. This is very pleasant, relaxing. So, um, great way to unwind in itself of course very nice not forgetting the area above the ear and not forgetting the area behind the curvature of the skull super now for the temples and forehead themselves it is really useful to create some lift so we can uh, apply the palms of the hands and go in circular movements towards the top of the head. There is three uh, directions of the fibers of the temporal muscle. They go like this, like this, and like this. So we can walk in all these directions. Towards the back of the head, directly up. a little bit forward as well just one more time going directly vertical and towards the back of the head super and then i'll do some movement on the forehead itself i don't have a headband while i'm here on holiday so i'm using my um what do you call them? Sunglasses. <clears throat> so we spiral on the forehead. So this doesn't happen here in between the brow. We could hold and just do one part of the forehead at a time. And the idea is to move, to create mobility, to create glide. Particularly here, the chances are it will be more stuck. So paying attention to areas where you can't feel the slide being so, so obvious to accomplish, too easy to accomplish. part so you see the purpose of this hand is to prevent this from um, creasing towards the midline And then we could do something horizontal as well. I'm working with the knuckles of my hands and I'm not, I don't have any oil on, so this is going to be slow and deliberate. And we just go nice and slow. Relax the shoulders. I'm not modeling this very well. Super. Now the second part is the brow itself and we'll do three types of techniques uh, exercise hands and gua sha we have a gua sha here and oil as well so 
first of all let's do a technique for for muscle lift for this we're going to put index fingers um, on the brow here with a little bit of an elevation to give a bit of a stretch as a starting point and then we're going against the resistance of those fingers close the eyelids slowly slowly creating resistance creating slow deliberate action the eyelids should flutter and then we gently open them again don't create too much of a crease here a gentle elevation is enough and also don't do it like this towards the midline more out watch for any wrinkling Nice and slow, nice and slow. Great. Now we're going to use our hands. I don't have any oil on at this point. So I'm going to create a pinch and the lift, working from the midline outwards. We can't help but work the number 11, of course, here as well. So instead of doing this, the pinch and lift is going outwards. Lifting as I'm pressing my thumb pad into that eye area or into that eyebrow area rather. Super. You could uh, create a bit more intensity, maybe anchoring here so you don't crease um, in the midline and almost like um like you're trying to feel something trying to determine how thick it is so between your two pads the index finger pad and the thumb pad you've got that eyebrow super and then the other side sensitive that's totally cool if anything that means you need it more if there's processes happening there that will contribute to aging super so that was on dry skin now i'm going to get some oil on and do a few gua sha moves if you don't have a gua sha you could use your uh, finger pads as well area and then I'm going to take a pointy part of my gua sha whichever shape you have select the pointy bit and then we're going to go little circles pushing up and away from the midline so circles or spirals I suppose you could call them spirals as well Super. And then a technique I like is compression, taking the curvy part of your tool to match the curvy part of your brow, lift the brow, pinch it, restricting um, the flow of blood for a bit, careful so this doesn't happen, move away from the midline, hold 10-15 seconds, and then nice long strokes out.
also to create a bit of flow, a bit of sha, heat in gua sha, you could try on this um, outer part as long as you can hold it nice and tight so you don't have sagging skin, sort of traveling with you for the ride, little strokes that create heat. Just like that. Please make sure you've secured your brow. Don't poke yourself in the eye, preferably. <laughs> of life like this. And it's good hygiene to remove any excess fluid. Nice and flat. And down. And now we do the other side. So again, holding for support, making sure you don't crease here or here. We go nice little lifting circles, spirals. Do avoid this, yeah? Don't push whatever you're lifting towards the midline. Push up and away from the midline. Holding your toe really flat. So you're lifting, not pressing into the bone, but lifting the muscle. Super. And then let's create static compression. Arch of the two matches the arch of the brow. Lift. Please don't do this. 10 15 seconds. Let's do a few strokes to create the heat. Uh, immobilize this area to the best of your ability. Maybe I'm going to try it with the palm of the hand on this side. Too flat to the skin and little strokes. Not pressing too hard into the bone. When I'm home, I'll record the little sequence with a sawtooth gua sha. The one that has little indentations, that's really good for that as well. Super. Do try these techniques and see how the effect is for you, if it makes any difference or not. And then, yeah, hopefully you enjoy and that, that helps. <laughs>